Today, he was asked, hey, why are you leaving? Check out his answer, watch. Why did you drop out, Mr. President? Why did you drop out of the election? So here's the good news. He's alive. Joe Biden, ladies and gentlemen, he's still alive. I mean, for a while, it was seemingly touch and go. We didn't really know. There were all kinds of reports. Maybe he's on hospice. Maybe he's this. Maybe he's that. And again, I get back to this. You've got to be clear. You've got to be transparent. You've got to tell people what the heck is going on. And when you don't, that's when the rumor mill starts. So shame on the administration for not actually coming forward with more, unless this was just his way of getting back at people. I mean, look, he got taken out. He got taken out Chicago style. I mean, this is like full on mafia type stuff, <laughs> seriously. And Blagojevich had a great piece in the Wall Street Journal just exactly defining it that. In fact, I think the title was, let's throw it up, Drew. We got it here for you. Biden gets the Chicago treatment. Barack Obama, an old fashioned ward boss, orchestrates the president's removal. Because of course it was Barack Obama. Barack Obama's calling all the shots. Barack Obama, also is the one, ladies and gentlemen, who put Kamala Harris in the seat. I mean, she didn't deserve it. She hasn't won a single election in recent years. She got nowhere in the primaries, but you know, she checked a few boxes. Here we go. This is, this is Blagojevich writing, quote, I've known Mr. Obama since 1995. We both grew up in Chicago politics, a very particular kind of politics, let's be clear. We understand how it works. My word's not his, but let me go on. Blagojevich writes, with the bosses over the people, Mr. Obama learned the lessons well. And what he just did to Mr. Biden is what political bosses have been doing in Chicago since the 1871 fire selections masquerading as elections. What do you know, Mr. Obama, and I know this kind of Chicago politics better than anyone, we both rose up on it, and I was brought to ruin by it when the Illinois legislature impeached and removed me from the governor's office in 2009 for conversations initiated by Mr. Obama himself. So he, he might have just a little axe to grind here. We know that. We're okay with that. Let me continue on. A common element in my case, and now Mr. Biden's, is Mr. Obama's involvement. He's the central figure who played a behind the scenes role in both stories. Uh-huh, it gets better. He writes, while well, today's Democrat bosses may look different from the old time cigarette chomping guy with a pinky ring. <laughs> it's a little reference to the mafia, if you didn't get it. They operate the same way. In the shadows of the back room, Mr. Obama, Nancy Pelosi, and the rich donors, the Hollywood and Silicon Valley elites, are the new bosses of today's Democratic Party. They call the shots. The voters, most of them, working people, are there to be lied to, to be manipulated, to be controlled. All along, Mr. Biden and Democrat politicians have been claiming that this year's presidential race is about saving democracy. They are the biggest hypocrites in American political history. Well said. <laughs> well, well said by Rob Blagojevich. I mean, clearly, there's a lot of hypocrisy going around here. Because you can't tell me you're all about saving democracy, all while putting someone at the top of the ticket who wasn't actually rightfully there to begin with. I mean, they really took him out. And a lot of people are saying, wait a second, did this just kind of happen while he was like on his near deathbed kind of thing? Again. I say that with a grain of salt because the rumor mill has been in overdrive, but apparently he's very sick. He was suffering from COVID. So there he is, light up with a fever. They've been pressuring him and pressuring him and pressuring him. And finally, they get him to sign off on this thing. And apparently the signature doesn't really look like his because there's an underline on it. Now, it's neither here nor there. But again, when you create this void of information, what do you do? You fuel the rumors. And that's exactly what happened. So everybody's pouring through these signatures and they're looking at them and they're comparing and contrasting. I think we have some, some examples. I mean, you look at the old signatures of Joe Biden and you compare them to this new one and you're like, wait, I mean, this is, this is one of the things that's out there, okay? Like, you know what? The internet is a big, big place. And a lot of people have a lot of things to say and I try to be very careful what we bring you and who knows what's going on here, but I think it's a worthwhile point that people are bringing up and if nothing else, I can tell you this, somehow people are asking questions because nobody's actually providing any kind of transparency. I mean, who the heck resigns from the top of the ticket 
via a post on X. It's just not done, right? Normally, you might give an address of some sort, which he's going to give tonight. So we'll see, we'll see how that goes.